Hey fellow mages, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Mind Over Magic, Episode 7, Refining Beasts. So the first thing I wanted to pull for you guys is, should we keep one of the three water students that we currently have or seek out better candidates? So the ideal, in my opinion, for a water student Water is a pretty good, um, so, so water lets you clean and also brew up potions relatively quickly. Um, but its real strength is in combat. They make for pretty decent backliners in combat. And in that regard, uh, we're looking for a water student that has uh, some powerful uh, casting. So it, if we take a look at their magic... Ignatio has zero bonus. Jocelyn has zero bonus. Kelly has a 20 bonus. Kelly has a 20 bonus because Kelly is part of the Raven Cult. Uh, so the Raven Cult means that they are more powerful uh, casting attack spells, but they are also um, Doom and Gloom. They have a permanent minus 15 conviction or mood penalty as a result. Um, taking a look at the trials that they can go through, Ignatio can gain extra Earth Cap and also refill recreation faster. So none of that is regards to power or water spell level. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that there is multiple factors about what kind of spells they learn. So you'll have spells more or less related to the level of your wand and the total level of your uh, magic. So all four of these water students, as you can see, can go up to water level four. If they could go up to water level 5 or 6, they might get improved versions of these spells. So as you can see, uh, there's torrent level 1, and when they level up a little bit more, they get torrent level 2. They could get torrent level 3 or 4. I don't know if 4 exists, but they can get torrent, higher level torrents if they um, level up even further. Um, so when you're taking a look and analyzing students for their uh, spellcasting potential in combat, you should consider both power... And also consider total um, water level or total level of their primary magic skill. Because that is what def uh, defines their magic ability. So had this trial been a plus one to water level cap, uh, the equation might change a little bit. Taking a look at Jocelyn. Jocelyn has a... likes to sleep. Has a two speed, two power, ten HP. Uh, two power is really not much at all. And then a... Gaining conviction after hall task. Kelly has a refills recreation faster, gains five power, 25 health, and gains five speed, 25 mana. So five power total, bringing the total up to 25. Uh, looks like you guys want to find better candidates. So what we're going to do is we're going to graduate all three of these students and bring in new students. All three of these students were gifted. Um... So we're probably not going to be able to summon additional gifted students until we get some adept scrolls. So the current priority right now, and let's hide this, is to at least one of the priorities is to get adept scrolls. So adept scrolls is going to allow us to bring in better students into the school. Um... All right. Then the other thing I wanted to ask was about a construction project to work towards. So, uh, typing up some polls here. Done. So, uh, on the on the left there, uh, there's a bunch of different things we could do. I'm going to pause just to explain them. Uh, so, better classrooms. If we ended up putting a bookshelf in this basic classroom, it would go from a learning rate of 50% to a learning rate of 100%, allowing us to graduate students faster. Uh, doesn't take a lot of effort. Big benefit. Uh, we can also go with better bedrooms or more bedrooms for staff. Right now, I have some extra bedroom capacity, so maybe that's not needed. I have room for at least one more staff member. Uh, we could also do better dining rooms for staff as well. So I want to take a second to actually explain that um, because it is worth planning towards. These are one of the big things worth planning towards. So the best possible dining room for staff 
is this, and I'm sure I'm going to say it wrong, but salé à manger, or the manger, or whatever. And uh, it requires 85 luxury, which is an insanely high luxury need for a room. It requires a three large windows or a huge window, which is not something we have access to yet, but we can work towards. And then also three small roof decorations or one large roof decoration, which is also very expensive, might I add. Uh, but the benefit is it gives 25 conviction to any staff member who eats there. And the requirements, of course, is that it is private, lofted, and towered. So private means it only has one entrance. Lofted means it's taller than it is wide. And towered means that it um, isn't connected to other buildings on the um, sides or roof. So it has nothing adjacent to it on the sides of roof. It can, however, have stuff adjacent to it below. Um, and then the best possible dining room for students is something totally different. So students, um, they use common rooms or house common rooms. So generally speaking, you build one really large room for all of what the students need. They're dining, they're sleeping, and they're recreation. Uh, which is a common room or house common room. So house commons gives the most conviction for dining. It gives 25 conviction for dining, 25 conviction for sleeping, and 10 conviction for recreation. Um, compare that to a conservatory, which is only five conviction for recreation. So the conservatory is the best possible place for your faculty to recreate, whereas a house commons has double the benefit for students. So generally speaking, the meta is for your students to use their common room and your staff to use a conservatory, um, restricting the enchantophones only for students or faculty, depending on the room. Uh, so the house common requirements is the same, uh, more or less, as the staff dining room uh, in terms of the uh, keywords. Private, elevated, and towered. So instead of lofted, elevated, Elevated means there isn't a building below it, and towered means there isn't a building next to it, right, left, or above. So essentially, your house commons room has to stand alone significantly. And generally, um, the way I build house common rooms is as a wing off the side of a building, like the way the scullery is. Because if I, for instance, put a wall here, and I'm not building this wall, this room would be both private, elevated, towered, um, and in this case, lofted, but lofted isn't a requirement we need. Uh, so the reason I mention this is that when you're working towards an ideal setup, you should definitely have that in mind. Basically, you should designate the space that the ideal room is going to require in your head so that you're designing a, a school that um, can accommodate that ideal structure. Because otherwise, you're going to have to completely redesign everything. And there is 100% returns when you sell things. But what ends up happening, if, if that's your approach, is that in the process of like redesigning, you're going to be making everyone miserable in your school. Because if you like destroy the bedrooms and dining rooms and, and all that to be able to do a redesign, then nobody has a bedroom or a dining room and they're going to get pissed. Uh, so trying to minimize the amount of renovations that you have to do is ideal. So it looks like you guys want better classrooms, so I'm going to add that to the poll. So there are other types of classrooms, and I want to go over that as well. Um, we're only going to be really going after the advanced, uh, the intermediate classrooms for a very long time. But what I can tell you is what the other classrooms will look like, but I will not have the technology for that, even this stream. Uh, so the advanced classrooms cannot have these generic teaching spots. Instead, they have specialty teaching spots that only teach one school of magic. So you have fire, water, earth, dark, etc. Um, and then, so an advanced classroom can be a giant room with one of each of the schools of magic teaching spots, which is really only useful to you if you have a lot of faculty. Because let's say you have six students and each of the six students chooses a different school of magic to want to focus on, then you're going to need at least six faculty to teach those six students. They will learn a lot faster at that school specific teaching spot. Um, but it will take up a lot of room in your base in your, in your tower. And, um, it's pretty late game research technology. And then if you want even higher learning rate, 
uh, you can do a specialized classroom just for fire or just for earth or whatever. And that's real late game. In fact, most of the time it isn't even required unless it is specifically required by the trials. So every now and then you'll get a trial of something like they want to cast 75 times by themselves in a water classroom. And if the reward of that trial is worth it, then you're going to want to set up a water classroom, have them cast by themselves 75 times, have them fulfill that requirement, and then probably even break down that classroom once you're done. Because unless you have an enormous amount of space for one classroom per school of magic, uh, that is a huge requirement, right? That is, that's going to take up a massive amount of room. So that's what like the super advanced classrooms might look like. And they all have their own requirements. So for instance... The geology is always going to want to be grounded. So it's always going to be on the earth level. As you can see, if I mouse over it, the keyword is grounded, right? And some of them have, will have keywords that don't change like that. So the Geomancer's Hall will always want to be grounded, whereas others will have keywords that change. So like a Pyromancer's Infernum wants to be skewed. A Hydro Laboratory wants to be elevated. A Layer of the Dark Arts doesn't care, but has a bunch of other requirements. Uh, Petrobol, Crusturano, Jazz... Bloody death. Thank you so very much for the resubs and bits. So in order to um, get that better classroom, we are already researching classroom essentials. So we just need to keep researching to unlock bookshelf because that's the only thing that we need for this better classroom. Um, I've got idle staff. So let's do a repel fog. The fog's kind of close, as you can see. So let's push it back. The other thing that might be good to do is to start exploring the uh, stone ruins. Especially if we're looking for better students. And then to think about the research tree required for advanced materials. Um, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but the requirements for advanced materials, uh, like the Kronbug, um, is something that you need to prepare for. So, like, for instance, the crone bug allows you to make, uh, allows you to make frosted glass, which is the ingredient needed for big windows. And big windows are required for most advanced buildings. Um, so working towards that goal is very handy early on because it is a lofty one without spoiling too much. So I think what I'm gonna do, uh, just cause we wanna get that bedroom, is for shield to really only work on research. Basically forcing him onto research so he researches really fast. He's not the best researcher, but because he doesn't sleep, eat, rest, etc., uh, it means he can tirelessly research continually. And then any time you push back the fog, it's worth checking to see if any of the fog crystals here have something that you really want. That's why I always do that. And you can see them over here. So six of them are dismal. One of them is malice, which is a fight. And then we have some underscore rock here that can be mined up. So Ignatio is somewhat close to being able to be graduated. Kelly just joined our school and Jocelyn uh, only recently joined our school. So they're both very new and low in progress. So it's going to be a minute for them to, uh, to graduate. Oh, and uh, and man, thank you for uh, I, I forgot the dog treat. Somehow I didn't hear the uh, the warning, the yeah. wake up and pay attention signal. So at the moment, the student schedule is sort of like um, keep them happy, but teach them a lot. I have two blocks of classes, which is a lot of classes. 
so that uh, we're making progress towards their graduation. And the classroom basics is is getting there. We're pushing that ahead. Now, the more medallions that they fulfill, the more scrolls I will get when they graduate. So, it is definitely useful for me to, if there's any low-hanging fruit, for me to have these students um, fulfill their medallions. So, for instance, Kelly has a medallion to recharge mana lanterns. So, I just stopped every other student from recharging mana lanterns. Uh, that one's really easy because all I have to do is is select Kelly and then right click these mana lanterns and I can hold shift to queue them up. And Kelly has a requirement of three mana lanterns and I just queued up three to be refilled. So that medallion will be done any second now. Already done. Just that easy. Uh, eating bitter gruel. So that's one... Um, I don't have the capacity to work on just yet, but I could work towards it. So bitter gruel is a, um, uh, comes from a gardened plant, the bitter rice, and we can build a bitter rice plot, uh, so that we can feed Kelly bitter gruel. So I'm going to put, uh, two bitter rice plots over here. It's also a food that offers more conviction than gutberry soup, gutberries, or carcass stew. Uh, so it's probably in our, in, in our morale advantage to do that. Uh, we did just have a spectral rift open up in our auditorium. So time for a battle. And I'm going to bring Kelly. No. I'm going to bring Ignacio because Ignacio has a water three. Well, actually, let me try to do the calculations here. So Ignacio at water 3, has access to a torrent that will do 30 damage. Kelly has access to a torrent that will do 35. So the, the, the way I calculate this is torrents are kind of the bread and butter skill for water mages. They do 20 extra damage in the back row, so torrents do 10 damage, put Ignatio in the back row, that's 30 damage. Kelly has only torrent level one, so it has a base damage of five. Um, in the back row, that will be 15, but then 15 plus the 20 power bonus is uh, 35. So Kelly, even though uh, Kelly is a way lower level student than Ignatio, still because of the Raven cult uh, species or whatever, um, it does more damage. Now there, there's also the matter of mana pool, and Kelly has more mana as well. Because if, if Kelly had almost no mana and Ignatio had a lot more mana, then there would be a case to bring Ignatio anyway, because we wouldn't run out of mana in the, in the process. And I'm going to bring one Rejuvenation Potion, just in case. All right. So these Torch Snuffers will drain mana on hit, which is very annoying for the tank. Um... Got to be careful with that, because you can easily run out of mana if the fight goes long. So there's the 35 damage I had mentioned. Ooh, a crit. Good. And now he's already down to 20 mana, so after this round... Um, after this round, he'll be completely spent, but I can use my Lightning Mage to actually give him mana through a spell. Alternatively, um, so as you can see, I can't even cast, so I have to pass, meaning that I'm likely to get hit, but luckily I can actually just kill this Torch Snuffer before it gets a chance to have its turn by just damaging it. And Kelly, you just won your first fight. Spectral Rift was defeated. Alright. Next project up to you guys. 
as I've explained uh, the benefits of all of them, what would you like for me to do? I'm also going to queue up the under school rock to be mined up, to be quarried, uh, so that we can potentially open up some more bitter rice plots. And the research is just about done. And there it goes. What I'll probably do in this instance is pick for myself what I think the next best magic is. And I'm going to go with the luxurious lighting so that if a room requires, because we're already partially done with it. And if a room requires more luxury uh, to be a, a room, uh, that will help. So we got access to a bookshelf. And I'm going to stick a bookshelf uh, behind the teaching stone, the learning stone, and have shield uh, assemble it so that the, the students will be learning faster and will be able to be graduated faster as a result. Actually, I'm going to change my choice there. I think the best thing for me to work towards is the Midden Jelly Refining Beast. That's going to be more important than um, Candelabras. So now, this classroom is um, has its requirements met to be an immediate one, so it's better. As Kelly levels up in um, water magic skill, it also might be worth uh, clearing some of the stone ruins, partially because we are going to need stone um, to expand our school, and also um, there are benefits for clearing out dungeons. Here's the middle gruel. Only um, a cost of five conviction when eaten. And I'll queue up ten of them. Uh, the other advantage of bitter gruel is everyone eats bitter gruel. So some foods are class specific, like like the vermin, the dire ants are really only eaten by um, by wolfkin. But bitter gruel is kind of a universal food, so there's a benefit there. There's a thunderstorming coming. Oh, that sucks. Oh, man. Um, so the, what's annoying about the thunderstorm is like on harder difficulties, you get hit by these thunderstorms, but the thunderstorm um, protection research is not uh, super easy to get early on. Where is it again? Um, lightning rod. Here it is. No, that's not it. Uh, here it is. So as you can see, 1560 and 1880 research. So there's just not a case where I get that before the thunderstorm rolls in or even before your first thunderstorm. So you just have to eat the cost of basically thunder wrecking you. There's like not much you can do about that. On easier difficulties, I don't think they occur um, so early so frequently, but on harder difficulties, it is, it's spicy. Or Drake, I would like you to focus on assembly. I want the bitter rice plots assembled. Oh, there is literally no one even teaching right now. So let's put teach to highest priority for everyone that isn't an emergency so that at least the students are learning. The good news is all of this um, underground stone did get mined up. So we can have a third bitter rice plot once this um, tree is destroyed. The tree is physically in the way.
Cheers. I'll even do a fourth. Bit of rice is something nice to have. So, the Midden Jelly Refining Beast research just got done. And, uh, I guess I'll work towards lightning rods just so that the constant annoyance of thunderstorms goes away. And then you guys voted for me to work on better classrooms, which there really, at this point really isn't much I can do in that regards. And also work on a, um, a garden of sorts. So I can do that. And I will do that. And I'm also, during this, I am going to set repair and construct as emergencies so that we can um, fix the damage done by this thunderstorm. Because as the rain precipitates on things like braziers, etc., it does more damage. So leaving it unrepaired takes more effort in the long run. Now, students are able to do repairs. Wow, the floor beneath you just got punched out. Um, students can do repairs as well, which is also very handy. So, as you can see, all three of them are capable of repairing. Yeah, here comes the pain. Absolutely. Oh, and now Wolfkin may only cast direct damage spells in battle. Uh, that sucks because that means our Earth magic staff uh, can't defend himself with armor. So until that goes away, I really should not enter combat unless it's absolutely necessary. As I will have to face tank everything and that's going to suck. So thanks game for, you know, really turning the screws here. So kind of you. Now there is one worry here, which is that um, while everyone's on an emergency repair, they will likely neglect their own needs. And um, as a result, become upset. So it's also going to be really important for us to uh, to manage their conviction as the thunderstorm goes on. And also, there's cases where, like, Cathanon keeps getting trapped because the floor around him that would have otherwise allowed him to go... I'm guessing he's out of mana? Yeah, he's out of mana, so he can't even do repairs. Um, keeps getting blown out. Would it be worth trying for Earth students next? I'll be pulling for it. Uh, for the next School of Magic once these uh, water students are done. Ultimately, in my opinion, for Earth, speed is the most important stat by far because the, the power stat doesn't actually improve the armor that you cast. The armor isn't affected by power. So when you're trying to tank, all that matters is speed. And it's going to be... I don't envision easily being able to find a non-wolfkin uh, with more speed than Locke. Locke is, has a speed of 35, so that's way faster than almost any other student that I'm ever going to see. But for comparison, 15, 12... 10, right? These three students don't even get close to um, to Locke's speed. And Locke is really the, the stat that matters most when you're trying to tank. Cool. We did some dancing trials. So Ignatio here has every trial done, which means they can graduate with honors. Uh, Jocelyn here needs to pet refining beasts and participate in a ritual while rested. Okay. So let's talk about refining beasts. A bit. Uh, refining beasts, I'll put them here. Refining beasts are um, resource processors. 
they're like production facilities, but only uh, can they be run by students. Might sound weird, but that's the way it is. And uh, right now I'm going to take everyone off of emergency construct and repair. And then I'm taking shield off of um, emergency research so that shield can assemble these min beasts, these min uh, jellies. So the way these work, and this is true of all beasts, is if you look at beast care, only students are allowed to do beast care. So only students will um, interact with the beasts. And Jocelyn here has a trial to do that. So Jocelyn's beast care, I'm going to set to high priority. And these things process materials. So you, essentially, you feed them a specific material and you get back something else. So if we want sinew, we can feed it uh, small carcasses. If we want viscera, we can feed it small carcasses. If we want ectoplasm, which we do, ectoplasm is a very useful material for uh, alchemy. We feed it ectoplasms and wor wormweed pods. So I'm going to set up um, a do until... I don't really need viscera. Viscera is actually really easy to come by just by killing rats. But I'm going to set up a do until we have 20 ectoplasm and do until we have 50 sinew and on the other refining beast i'm going to do the same thing but in reverse i'm going to do sinew then ectoplasm um so the way these work is that these midden jellies um need to be cared for by students essentially fed and pet and uh by students anyone can bring materials to the midden jellies or any of the refining beasts but to actually initiate the process of man of producing resources, that's a student-only thing. All right, and we ought to do a repel fog uh, sometime today as well. So in the schedule, the red tasks for students are taking care of beasts and the like. Uh, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change their schedules here. I'm going to add beast care right after uh, food. Move the lunch hour one hour later and then just nudge everything back so that there's multiple beast cares throughout the day. So now it's care for students. Uh, it's care, care, care with a lot of recreation. So that they don't, they, cause a lot of the times their trials will be, um, st staying at a very high conviction level or never, uh, craving recreation. So it's very useful for your students to uh, be well recreated. Uh, I also like to put the, the the processing beasts down below because they will produce a lot of filth. Oh, uh, you, Locke, are going to get stuck there if you finish that, so don't do that. As you can see, there's no pathing here. This is a dead spot. So students can walk around the back of the summoner. In fact, I might want to move that as a result to somewhere that won't cause um, pathing issues. Like there, perhaps? Or even here is, is okay, right in front of the alchemy bench. That's a little cramped. So here is the midden jelly producing ectoplasm uh, from carcasses and wormweed pods. So I, what I could do here is I can copy the settings here, paste the settings here, and then just switch the order. So one is ectoplasm, then sinew. The other is sinew, then ectoplasm. So that we have them, uh, that we work on both kind of at the same time.
And Jocelyn is currently petting a the Minden Jelly to keep it happy. Because if it's not happy, it, it, it won't process. So then if we take a look, Jocelyn has one third progress towards uh, Creature Comforter. And this Minden Jelly is able to process Sinew. Uh, but we are out of small carcasses. So I will fix that. I don't want to hunt them all, because if I hunt every single one, we our wolfkin won't be able to eat, but I'll hunt most of them. How close are they to graduation? Oh, so Ignatio is very close to graduation, just needs a little bit more water magic. Jocelyn needs two water magic, one earth, one lightning. And Kelly needs two water, one air. So they're not that far off. So a spectral rift appeared, a messy meddler. And um, what sucks here is, yeah, my, my earth caster uh, won't be able to tank. So it might be worth... Hmm. Oh, this is not going to be a, a fun fight. So I'll bring Kelly again, but I'm going to bring uh, five regeneration potions because I'm going to be face tanking this fight. And jumping in. So that midden jelly is able to allow us to... to brew up a lot more potions as a result. So we have another Torch Snuffer, which is a Mana Stealer, and then this Messy Meddler. The Messy Meddler is in front, so it needs to die first. The Lightning Mage can technically attack the Torch Snuffer, but it's, it's better to focus fire on a single target to eliminate them quickly. Um, the other thing I could do is use Soak. So Soak reduces the power and speed of enemies um, so it makes this Messy Meddler hit less. It does use a lot more mana, but I will hit it, this Messy Meddler, with a Soap so that its damage output is lowered. And as you can see, it's it's actually... If Locke gets hit by both the Meddler and the, um, the Torch Snuffer, uh, that's real bad because he doesn't even have the health pool to absorb from both. So if this Meddler decides to attack Locke, yeah, it did. Locke is down and we'll need rescue at the end of this. That's why those stupid, not stupid, but those challenging recurring random events can be so damning and so damaging. Luckily, um, Ford Drake has a ton of HP. Now there are revival potions that you can throw at your teammates. I just didn't, I don't have access to them yet and didn't bring one in. I will soak the Torch Snuffer as well to lower its damage so that it's easier for Drake to attack and tank. Drake's mana is almost spent, um, but Cathanon's damage is roughly equivalent to Drake. In fact, I would say higher on average. Because Drake does 25 damage with a 50% chance to do 50, whereas uh, Cathanon is a guaranteed 40. So using Cathanon to recharge Drake doesn't make much sense. And this next round should be the last one, I think. Yeah. There we go. So because of the stupid curse, Locke will be down. Luckily, uh, Locke fainted in the hospital. So if there was ever a place to go down, he found it. And I'll put uh, Hathanon in responsibility to revive. I'm not going to leave it up to a student. Water magic is normally the magic used to revive people. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to have Drake drink 
a potion um, so that he doesn't spend a lot of time resting and recuperating because we need more faculty and uh, and then likewise medical rest I'm going to reduce to a normal because if Drake isn't teaching um, the students aren't learning and graduating so locks up at 2 health and has a trauma for 8 days which is a lowered HP and conviction just the way it is when you have a uh, one of these curses. Lock, uh... Is there no more mana potions? I guess there aren't. He's brewing some up. Trying to. The more wounded you are, the more times you'll spell misfire. So I'm actually going to take over and create the potion with shield, who won't spell misfire. So that you can just rest. Thank you for tuning in to Mind Over Magic, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 2nd. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow mages. 